If you got into keeping insects and other invertebrates, from your love of keeping reptiles or interest in reptiles, then you may know that it is important to quarantine new animals away from healthy established animals that you've had to prevent any kind of infection or parasites from getting into established pets that you know are healthy. For those of you who haven't ever heard about quarantining new pets, let me go over a couple of benefits. The reason why you should quarantine new pets is in case a new animal comes in, you may not notice it right away, it may have some kind of internal or external parasite, it may be sick with something and it's just not showing signs yet, so you really want to keep new animals in its own separate container, in a separate room or across from or across the room from animals that you have had for a while and you know are healthy. You don't want parasites, mites, anything like that getting into every cage you own. That's just a lot of work. So with reptiles, when you quarantine them, you want to keep them in a smaller than usual cage for the animal to make sure that they are finding food and you can keep a better eye on them in a smaller enclosure and you always want to keep things in this quarantine cage to be very simple disposable so that if there is mites or anything you can just throw it out and put fresh in there to help get rid of the mites or disease whatever and preferably everything in it should be white or very lightly colored to help you spot mites and any other kind of bug in there as far as I know, there's no info, info on the internet about quarantine pet invertebrates and the insects. So I thought I'd talk to you about how to do that. To do this, you just want a little container. It's going to depend on the size of the pet that you're keeping, the size of your container. This is just a basic six, six cup rubber made container with a lid. The lid is perforated. You're probably not going to see it very well, but it's got raised holes. If the pet you're keeping needs a humid environment, you're probably going to want more holes than this to prevent mold. This is just an example, so I just punched a few in there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take damp paper towels. There's no, there's no drips. You can see that it is not dripping. And you're just going to crumple them up lightly. You don't want to squeeze them shut or anything that they're really hard. You just want them crumpled lightly so that your pet roach, beetle, centipede, whatever, can actually climb in between the crumpled folds of this damp paper towel. It creates more surface space and it'll allow them to crawl in there and have themselves covered as is their natural habitat of burying under soil usually. So it'll help make them feel safe. And just crumple them lightly, stick them on top of each other. For this cage, you're probably going to want, might want one or two more in there. It's up to you, just an example. You can see that these things are not soggy from the plate that I had them on. There's maybe one or two little drops of water in there. There's not a puddle or anything. So I can do this and I'm not getting wet. Then, for millipedes, centipedes, decomposers in general, they mainly eat decaying wood and leaves. Their main source of food is usually leaves. These are oak leaves. They tend to be the favorite of, keep, of people who keep arthropods such as millipedes, centipedes. So, you can also put it in as leaf litter, but I suggest using it whole because if they do end up having mites, they're going to hide in the leaf litter and you may not even notice that there's mites. So I suggest using whole leaves. You can put, you know, one in the bottom or two in the bottom plus on the top, however way you want it. I'm just going to put one in here on the top as an example. That's going to be the main food source. Just put a fresh one in as need be. But millipedes, especially most other decomposers, really, really should have some kind of woody substance in their food as well. So we're just going to use sticks. These are from outside. 
and because this is a quarantine terrarium that you're using to check for the presence of mites and diseases and whatnot, the sticks that you use, you want them to be very, very light in color. Uh, the palest gray you can find or white, this is from Dogwood, it's very pale gray. You might be able to see that one better. But uh, silver maple especially tends to have a lot of really light colored. And you just put that in there any way you want. I'm going to put it under the leaf and cover it a bit with the leaf so they can feel safe if they're under there. You can also use a really pale tan, like sand blast or something you'd see on the beach, kind of light in color. You can use those too, that's fine. And just stick them in there on top. Allow them to climb on it and give them a a woody food source as well. That one's not going to fit. <laughs> you can also use some bark. Again, the lighter colored, the better. So you want to find the lightest gray as you can. Again, maple, birch, that kind of thing tends to have really light bark. Just set that in there. They'll hide under there and eat it. My millipedes love bark. Absolutely love it. They'll crawl on it. You stick it vertically, they can climb directly vertically up it, so however you want. Then you would just put whatever you got in there and put the lid on. And then because this is a quarantine cage, you need to keep it in a separate room from your health animals in case there is mites or something in here that can infect your other animals. Or if you don't have a separate room, at least keep it across the room on a completely different side of the room from your healthy animals. You're going to need to completely take out these damp paper towels and put in completely fresh new ones about once a week. Maybe more, maybe less, depending on the size of the animal you're keeping in here and the quantity. I'm just estimating about a week completely new. Every time that you clean this out and put fresh paper towels in, maybe even between, you want to take out each item and carefully look it over, inspecting it for little black dots, you know, um, brown dots of mites and, you know, springtails, maggots, you know, anything that shouldn't be in there. Check the feces for odd coloration, like you don't want to see white or bloody red splotches or yellow or anything like that sitting in the feces. Just inspect each item, inspect the towels, take out your animals, inspect them. Make sure you don't accidentally throw away any beetles or <laughs> baby millipedes or something in the trash with the paper towels. Count, <laughs> count the number of individual pets that you have in one container before you put them in there so you can count them to make sure you get them all out before you start throwing stuff in the trash can really bad. Um, example of a few things that you may find, especially if this is a wild animal. If you're collecting some kind of wild invertebrate, such as a pill bug or something from outside, that you want to add to an existing terrarium of yours, that is the most important time to use a quarantine, is for wild caught specimens because they're the ones that are most likely going to be bringing in mites on their body. Um, if there's any soil clinging to their feet or to their body, that soil could contain spores of mushrooms, possibly poisonous species of mushrooms. You don't want that growing in your tank. They could have in that soil eggs of various flies and mites and other parasites, and then you got maggots in there. So I really, really, really advise everyone to use a quarantine setup because if you got mites in something like this, which has, you know, several inches of soil in there and plants and logs and whatnot, you're going to have to take everything out, throw out all the soil, bleach everything that's in here, spray it down, and it's just going to be a big pain in the butt to do. So... Whereas if you got something like this, that you get tons of mites in, all you got to do is take everything out, throw it out, spray it down, clean it good, get some kind of mite killer or whatever for the type of pet that is okay for them, spray that down, spray this down, put all new stuff in, put it in, and it should take care of your problem. Much easier, right? 
So please, please, please use a quarantine terrarium. If you've got any questions, I will try to answer them. Just leave me a message. And if you'd like to see photo examples of millipede mites and springtails and other type of parasites and whatnot that you should be looking for in a quarantine setup when you're quarantining animals, check the description of the video. I will try to provide you links to photos of different types of parasites and stuff like that. All right? See ya.